Throughout history, though, there have been far more brutal and overt forms of government repression. We've got an example of that next as we go back to 1977, when Ethiopia's military regime was involved in a violent campaign against any form of opposition. It was called Ethiopia's Red Terror. Alex Last has been speaking to a woman who was imprisoned and tortured by the regime, and you may find parts of her story distressing. It could be anybody. Our friends were being taken. You were saying, when would my turn be? It was devastating. It was mind-blowing. It was unbelievable. One night in 1977, Ethiopian security in Addis Ababa came to arrest a young woman with an unusual first name. She's called Original Welda Gergis, and she was 24 years old. She would be just one more victim of Ethiopia's military regime, the Derg. I was at home with a very wicked headache. When plain close people, they came and I just went out with a... <laughs> A very, very tiny nightdress and a barefoot. My mother was so surprised and frightened. She just brought something to put on my shoulders, nothing else. So I was, I was really half-naked when I was taken. And they took me to the office of the Dirk, the, the old Menelik Palace. So when I went there, there was a commander and he said, go and tear her apart. Original was a mid-ranking member of the EPRP, the Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Party, a popular left-wing underground movement which opposed the country's new military regime, called the Derg. The Derg had taken power following the overthrow of Emperor Haile Selassie in 1974, and though it adopted communism as its ideology and spoke of revolution... For many on the left, it was simply a brutal, undemocratic, authoritarian regime. Certainly, it was ruthless towards its perceived enemies. In 1976, as opposition violence intensified across the country, the Derg launched a campaign of murder, arrest and torture against so-called counter-revolutionaries. The EPRP was a principal target. In homage to Soviet history, the Derg called their campaign... The Red Terror. Their cadres would just go out on the street. They see a youth, they shoot and kill him. And they killed so many young people. It could be anybody. They don't ask, they don't inquire, they just shoot. And the Derg regime wanted to show its work. The corpses of its victims would be dumped on the streets as the BBC reported at the time. In the last few weeks, people who've been coming to work in Addis after the dawn curfew's been lifted have often had to bypass bodies which are displayed at prominent street corners. The victims have always been shot in the back of the head and they usually bear a notice pinned to their chests saying that they were enemies of the revolution. Nobody knows the exact number of people who've died in this so-called red terror, but the essence of revolutionary justice, apparently, is that it's quick. They used to throw the bodies on the streets, on the streets. That is not only it. They used to ask for the price of the bullet for the people they have killed. That is real. The shocking part is after you pay, they never give you the body. No mother whose son or daughter was killed during their terror has a body to bury. They didn't. Anyone could be a suspect, killed, arrested or tortured. And in this climate of fear, many were denounced, innocent or not. When they came for original, they took her to one of the interrogation centres in the capital Addis Ababa, a place with a brutal reputation, and there her ordeal began. I could hear a boy groaning. I think he was being tortured. The investigators just pushed me from behind so that I fell flat on my face. And then he beat me with a whip. I kept quiet and said, oh, this lady did something else. Original, still wearing just her nightie, was trussed up and hung upside down from a horizontal pole under her knees. Then the beatings and torture began again. Here she describes the brutality she experienced. Imagine me half-dressed, being swung like that. And they beat me for hours. 
I can't imagine how to describe that torture. They beat you and beat you and beat you on your soul so that the insides of your feet is like, like raw meat. And uh, unfortunately for me, they, they tore my toes. The marks of the torture are still there. After two hours, he let me down and took me to his office. I couldn't walk. He just pulled me and put him in the office. Somebody wearing white came along and said, who have you slapped inside there? Why? He said, the corridor is full of blood. He said, please call somebody, have the corridor cleaned and do something about this blood. The two things I, I most remember of this torture is that you get very, very cold. You shiver. I don't know why. And then you are very, very thirsty. For my shivering, the guard was kind enough to say there was a man who was killed yesterday. He has some clothes, so you'd better put it on. So there was blood on the clothes, but I was really thankful and I, I wrapped it around myself. That wasn't the end of the torture, but Original considers herself one of the luckier ones. She was not killed. She was transferred to one of the overcrowded prisons in Addis Ababa. To keep their spirits up, the inmates would tell each other stories and talk of revolution in far-off lands. You can't imagine how many stories I told to the kids. Jane Eyre, Wuthering Heights, the Count of Monte Cristo. Otherwise, you talk about July 26th revolution and we talk about the Ambianfu, we talk about the Long March. It depends on the audience. Sometimes they like it, sometimes they don't. And we go around the world through the stories. Many did not survive long in the prisons. Names would be called and it was soon clear to all that many were being taken away and executed. I never forget their names. I never forget the way they looked when they go out. Even after so many years, I can't talk about it without emotion. And there were others who were summoned after 5 p.m. When they walked out of the compound, they walked as if a prize were being put on them. They, they walked so tall and proud, and so many people passed through my eyes to be killed. After two years, Original was suddenly released. But by the end of the 1970s, the Red Terror campaign was largely over. The EPRP ceased to be a major threat to the regime. It's not clear how many were killed during the Red Terror across Ethiopia. Estimates range from 100,000 to half a million. After the fall of the Derg in 1991, some leaders of the regime were put on trial for crimes against humanity, but for some, the full extent of the terror has yet to be addressed. Original Walder Gerges returned to study law at Addis Ababa University and is now a leading lawyer in Ethiopia, focusing on women's rights. She says she has forgiven those responsible for her treatment, but the scars of the Red Terror are still felt across Ethiopia. In my family, in my neighborhood, in the friends of my sisters, in in the friends of my brothers, in my classmates in high school, in the university, and the people I met in prison. So many were taken away and executed. There is a void. The wounds are still there. There are still families and people suffering, and, and the gap of the generation is enormous. Original Walder Gergis was talking to Alex last, and you can hear an extended version of that interview in the Witness podcast. Just search for BBC Podcasts and then Witness. Incidentally, the Ethiopian dictator Colonel Mengistu was sentenced in absentia to death for crimes against humanity, but he's currently living in exile in Zimbabwe.